Risk Management Chapter 3 Risk Analysis and Planning In this chapter, we will look at the following subtopics. Risk Identification and Assessment Techniques for Identifying Risks Tools for Assessing Risk Probability and Impact Prioritizing Risks Based on Severity Subtopic 1 Risk Analysis 7 Planning Risk analysis and planning are crucial components of the risk management process. They involve a systematic evaluation of identified risks and the development of strategies and actions to effectively mitigate or manage those risks. Here's an overview of risk analysis and planning. 1. Analyzing causes and consequences. Risk analysis starts by examining the causes and potential consequences of identified risks. This involves understanding the root causes and drivers behind each risk and assessing how they may impact the organization, project, or activity. It's important to consider both direct and indirect consequences, as well as short-term and long-term impacts. 2. Assessing probability and impact. Quantitative and qualitative methods are used to assess the probability and impact of risks. Probability refers to the likelihood of a risk event occurring, while impact refers to the severity of the consequences if the risk materializes. This assessment can be done using historical data, expert judgment, statistical analysis, and other relevant information. 3. Risk Prioritization Once risks are analyzed and assessed, they can be prioritized based on their severity, probability, and potential impact on the organization's objectives. High-priority risks that have significant consequences or higher likelihood of occurrence are typically given more attention and resources for mitigation. 4. Developing Risk Response Strategies Risk planning involves developing strategies and actions to respond to identified risks. Several risk response strategies can be employed, including Avoidance, taking actions to eliminate or avoid the risk altogether such as changing processes, technologies, or business practices. B. Mitigation, implementing measures to reduce the likelihood or impact of the risk, such as implementing controls, redundancies, or safeguards. C. Transfer, shifting the risk to a third party, such as through insurance, contracts, or outsourcing. D. Acceptance, accepting the risk and its potential consequences, particularly when the cost of mitigation outweighs the potential impact. e. Contingency planning, developing backup plans or alternative approaches to minimize the impact of risks if they occur. 5. Allocating resources. Risk analysis and planning help in determining the resources required to effectively address identified risks. This includes financial resources, human resources, technology, and other necessary assets. Proper resource allocation ensures that risk mitigation efforts are adequately supported. 6. Establishing risk monitoring and review processes. Risk analysis and planning are not one-time activities. Regular monitoring and review of risks are essential to identify emerging risks, assess the effectiveness of risk response strategies, and make necessary adjustments. This iterative process helps maintain a proactive and dynamic risk management approach. 7. Communication and Documentation Risk analysis and planning require effective communication with stakeholders. It involves sharing the results of risk analysis, the chosen risk response strategies, and the rationale behind them. Proper documentation of the risk analysis process and risk response plans ensures clarity, transparency, and accountability. By conducting thorough risk analysis and planning, organizations can make informed decisions, allocate resources effectively, and develop proactive strategies to manage risks. It allows them to reduce uncertainties, enhance resilience, and improve the likelihood of achieving their objectives while minimizing potential negative impacts. Subtopic 2 Analyzing Causes and Potential Consequences of Risks Analyzing the causes and potential consequences of risks is a critical step in the risk management process. 
It involves understanding the underlying factors that contribute to the occurrence of risks and evaluating the potential impacts they may have on an organization, project, or activity. Here are the key steps involved in analyzing causes and consequences of risks. 1. Identify root causes. Start by identifying the root causes or drivers that lead to the occurrence of each risk. This requires a thorough examination of the factors that contribute to the risk event. Root causes can be related to internal processes, external factors, human factors, technology, regulatory changes, market conditions, or other relevant aspects. 2. Consider contributing factors. Besides the root causes, it's important to consider the contributing factors that amplify or facilitate the occurrence of risks. These factors may include organizational weaknesses, lack of controls or safeguards, inadequate training or resources, dependencies on external entities, or any other elements that increase the likelihood or impact of the risk. 3. Evaluate interdependencies. Assess the potential interdependencies between different risks and their causes. Risks can be interconnected, meaning that the occurrence of one risk can trigger or exacerbate other risks. Understanding these interdependencies helps in developing comprehensive risk management strategies and addressing multiple risks collectively. 4. Assess potential consequences. Analyze the potential consequences or impacts of the identified risks. This involves considering both direct and indirect consequences across various dimensions, such as financial, operational, reputational, legal, environmental, or safety. Assess the short-term and long-term effects of each risk event to understand the full extent of its potential impact on the organization. 5. Quantify and qualify consequences. Where possible, quantify the potential consequences of risks in terms of financial impact, time delays, customer satisfaction, or other measurable metrics. This helps in making informed decisions and prioritizing risks based on their severity. For consequences that cannot be easily quantified, qualitative assessments can be made to understand their significance and potential implications. 6. Consider probability. While analyzing consequences, it's crucial to consider the likelihood or probability of each risk event occurring. Assess the probability based on historical data, expert judgment, statistical analysis, or industry benchmarks. Understanding the likelihood helps in assessing the overall risk exposure and prioritizing risks accordingly. 7. Document findings. Document the analysis of causes and consequences for each identified risk. This documentation provides a record of the analysis process, helps in communicating the findings to stakeholders, and serves as a reference for future risk management activities. By analyzing the causes and potential consequences of risks, organizations gain a deeper understanding of the factors contributing to risks and their potential impacts. This analysis serves as the foundation for developing effective risk mitigation and management strategies to minimize negative consequences and enhance overall organizational resilience. Subtopic 3 Developing Risk Response Strategies Avoidance, Mitigation, Transfer, Acceptance When developing risk response strategies, organizations have several options to choose from, including avoidance, mitigation, transfer, and acceptance. These strategies help organizations effectively manage and respond to identified risks. Here's an explanation of each strategy. Strategy number one. Avoidance. Avoidance involves taking actions to eliminate or avoid the risk altogether. This strategy is applicable when the potential consequences of the risk are severe and the organization decides that it's best to steer clear of the risk entirely. Avoidance can be achieved by altering processes, technologies, business practices, or even the scope of a project. By eliminating the risk, organizations minimize the need for further risk management efforts related to that specific risk. Strategy number two. Mitigation. Mitigation focuses on reducing the likelihood or impact of a risk. This strategy aims to minimize the potential negative consequences associated with the risk. 
Mitigation measures can involve implementing controls, safeguards, redundancies, or process improvements. It may also include training employees, enhancing security measures, or developing backup plans. The goal is to proactively address the risk and reduce its potential impact on the organization. Strategy number three, transfer. Transfer involves shifting the risk to a third party. This strategy is commonly used in situations where the organization does not have the capability or resources to manage the risk internally. Transferring the risk typically involves purchasing insurance policies, entering into contracts that allocate the risk to another party, or outsourcing certain activities to external vendors. By transferring the risk, organizations shift the responsibility for managing and bearing the consequences of the risk to another entity. Strategy number four. Acceptance. Acceptance is a strategy where the organization acknowledges the risk and its potential consequences but chooses not to take specific actions to mitigate or transfer it. This strategy is suitable when the potential impact is low, the cost of mitigation outweighs the benefit, or the risk falls within acceptable tolerance levels. Acceptance may also be a deliberate choice when the organization decides to allocate resources to higher priority risks instead. However, acceptance does not mean ignoring the risk entirely, it involves monitoring the risk and being prepared to respond if it materializes. It's important to note that organizations may employ a combination of these risk response strategies based on the specific characteristics of each risk and the organization's risk appetite. Each strategy has its own benefits and limitations, and the choice of strategy depends on factors such as the severity of the risk, available resources, cost-effectiveness, legal and regulatory requirements, and the organization's overall risk management objectives. When developing risk response strategies, organizations should consider the potential effectiveness, costs, and trade-offs associated with each strategy to ensure that the chosen approach aligns with their risk management goals and enhances their ability to respond to and mitigate risks effectively. Subtopic, Creating Contingency Plans and Fallback Options Creating contingency plans and fallback options is an important aspect of risk management. Contingency plans provide a predefined course of action to be implemented if a risk event occurs, while fallback options serve as alternative strategies to be pursued if the original plan becomes unfeasible or ineffective. Here's a guide on creating contingency plans and fallback options. Identify critical risks. Start by identifying the most critical risks that have the potential to significantly impact the organization, project, or activity. These are the risks for which contingency plans and fallback options are essential. Assess potential impact. Evaluate the potential impact of each critical risk on various aspects of the organization, such as operations, finances, reputation, and stakeholders. Understand the consequences that may arise if the risk event materializes and consider both immediate and long-term effects. Analyze dependencies and interrelationships. Consider the dependencies and interrelationships between different risks and their potential effects on each other. A risk event in one area may have ripple effects on other aspects of the organization. Understanding these relationships helps in developing comprehensive contingency plans and fallback options. Develop contingency plans. Contingency plans outline specific actions to be taken if a risk event occurs. They provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to respond to the risk and minimize its impact. Contingency plans should be clear, practical, and actionable. They may include alternative processes, communication plans, resource allocation strategies, or any other measures required to address the risk event. Define trigger points. Establish trigger points or indicators that signal the need to implement the contingency plans. These trigger points can be based on specific events, thresholds, or early warning signs that indicate the risk is imminent or has already occurred. Trigger points help ensure a timely response to the risk event. Identify fallback options. Fallback options serve as alternative strategies if the original plan becomes unfeasible or ineffective. 
these options should be developed in parallel with the contingency plans. Fallback options may involve alternative approaches, resources, technologies, or partnerships that can be pursued if the primary plan fails to achieve the desired outcome. Test and refine. Continually test and refine the contingency plans and fallback options through simulations, tabletop exercises, or real-life scenarios. This helps identify any gaps or weaknesses in the plans and allows for necessary adjustments and improvements. Regular testing ensures that the plans are up to date and can be implemented effectively when needed. Communicate and train. Ensure that the contingency plans and fallback options are effectively communicated to all relevant stakeholders. Provide training and awareness programs to keep personnel involved in implementing the plans. Clear communication and understanding of the plans enhance the organization's ability to respond effectively to risk events. Remember, contingency plans and fallback options should be regularly reviewed and updated to reflect changes in the risk landscape, organizational objectives, or operating conditions. By having well-defined contingency plans and fallback options in place, organizations can mitigate the impact of risks, maintain business continuity, and enhance their overall resilience in the face of unexpected events. Join US in the next video, discussing Chapter 4 on Risk Monitoring and Communication.